Ted Bundy is the most infamous Sagittarius killer, but did you know that Ted Bundy has his astro twin? Another USA serial killer, Charles T. Sinclair, shares birthday with Ted Bundy, November 24, 1946. On Astro Weird, we're combining astrology and criminal profiling to better understand criminal behavior in general. So join us on a chilling journey of astrological profiling, all while remembering the lives affected and the darkness the killer is left in their wake. Before we start the investigation, please don't forget forget to like, share and subscribe. Also turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on new videos. Did you know that there are 82 Sagittarius serial killers? Before we go any further, let me first clarify a few things. I've compiled a list of serial killers all around the globe whose date of birth data is available. If you know that your country has a serial killer, but that country is not shown in any of the videos, it's probably because the only date available is the year. If you think that a killer from your country is not on the list, you can find the list of every signed serial killer in the description box for that sign. Please leave a comment and I'll look into it. As for the serial killers born in the 19th century and even some born in the first half of the 20th century, it's possible that the birthday of some of them is off, but due to the sheer number of serial killers, with further comparison, we'll be able to tell if something should be altered. However, this is a small percentage of possible errors, which will in no way hinder the analysis. As always, there are far less female killers than male, 7 compared to 75. It's true that women are generally less physically violent than men, but when they do decide to venture into crime, they are not less dangerous in any way. Actually, because men are seen as more aggressive, the women can be easily underrated and deemed inoffensive. Out of the seven female killers, only one was born in the 19th century, while six were born in the 20th century. Six males were born in the 19th century and 69 in the 20th century. There is always far greater number of killers born in the 20th than in the 19th century, but that's because back then the investigative and forensic methods weren't advanced enough to effectively apprehend the offenders. While there are, unfortunately, still a lot of unsolved cases, and probably the most infamous one is the identity of the Zodiac Killer, Imagine what today's investigators would be able to find in the Jack the Ripper case. To better understand criminal behavior, I've assembled an international list of Sagittarius serial killers, ensuring our examination remains unaffected by cultural, racial or religious variables. These Sagittarius offenders come from various regions around the globe, that is, they're from Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, Iran, Italy, Japan, Kenya, Netherlands, Russia, Slovakia, Spain, Sweden, UK, USA. Uzbekistan and Vietnam. The most prolific female Sagittarius killer comes from Vietnam. She's Li Tan Van, aka the Cyanide Witch, who was born on December the 5th, 1956. She's a typical criminal enterprise killer that is a killer who kills for financial gain. She conned some of her victims by claiming expertise she didn't have, like being a dental specialist who studied in Germany and knowing several languages and even impersonated an army captain. In 1992, she was accused of poisoning the entire family where she worked as a caretaker, where one of the family members died as a result of poisoning. Since there was insufficient evidence to charge Van with murder, she was instead convicted of fraud and sentenced to four years' imprisonment. She would usually lace the cup from which the victim was supposed to drink with cyanide or put cyanide in food. After the deaths of her victims, she would usually steal money and possessions from their houses or even inherit some money. In 2005, she was executed by a firing squad. She killed between 13 and more than 16 people. The second most prolific female killer is Linda Hazard, a.k.a. The starvation doctor from USA who was born on December the 18th, 1867. She was an American quack, swindler and convicted serial killer noted for her promotion of fasting, pummeling and hours-long animas as treatments. Hazard, whose last name suits her well, didn't have a medical degree but was nevertheless licensed to practice medicine. She was a proponent of fasting, but her form of fasting consisted of a diet where patients were allowed to eat small amounts of tomato, asparagus juice, and occasionally orange juice. 
Some patients did survive and even endorsed her, while the patients who weren't so lucky, she said they died of undisclosed or undiagnosed illnesses such as cancer and cirrhosis of the liver. In 1912, she was convicted of manslaughter for the death of Claire Williamson. Hazard had forged Williamson's will and stolen most of her valuables, which makes at least the part of her motives criminal enterprise. Hazard was sentenced to 2 to 20 years in prison. After serving only two years, the minimum of her sentence, she was given full pardon and then moved with her husband to New Zealand. Ironically, Hazard died of starvation in 1938 while attempting a fasting cure. The most prolific male Sagittarius serial killer is Karl Grossmann from Germany, who was born on December the 13th, 1963. Karl was a sexual predator, sadist, and a possible cannibal. As a young man, he got convicted for molesting a 10-year-old girl and assaulting a 4-year-old girl, who died afterwards. For those crimes, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. After he got out, he started selling meat at the black market and had a hot dog stand near the train station. It was later rumored that he put parts of his victims' bodies in the meat he was selling because he would throw bones and inedible parts of the victims in the river. Allegedly, he confessed to over 20 murders. He killed himself in 1922 while awaiting trial, so a lot about his crimes and motives remains unknown. He suspected of killing between 25 and more than 100 victims. The second most prolific male killer is Ivan Keller, aka the Pillow Killer from France, who was born on December 13. 1960. He came from a poor family and his father forced him to work hard so they could survive. Later, he became a landscape gardener and lived a modest life with his first wife, Marina. His neighbor said that he was very helpful, friendly, and affectionate with animals. Marina claimed that he forced her into prostitution because he was in constant need of money. Keller targeted elderly women so that he could steal their valuables. His signature was peculiar. He suffocated his victims in their bed, then remade the bed to perfection so it would look like a natural death. He killed himself in 2006. His last words were, I just wanted to be loved. He killed at least 23 victims, but there is a possibility that he killed as much as 150, which would make him one of the most prolific serial killers in history. The youngest born Sagittarius serial killer is Timofey Potshivalov from Russia, who was born on December the 20th, 1991. From July the 15th to August the 28th, 2011, he killed three homeless people and an employee of a construction company. He had been convicted twice before the murders, once in 2005 and the second time in 2010, but in both cases he received a suspended sentence. He beat his injured victims using his hands and feet, sticks, stones, and and even striking them with a knife and then an axe, which resulted in their death. He stole tracksuit and a mobile phone from his last victim, which were found in his apartment during the police search. In 2012, he was acquitted, but the prosecutor appealed the decision. Later that same year, Pochivalo was sentenced to life imprisonment in a special regime colony, which combines penal detention with forced labor, but was later transferred to regular prison. The most infamous Sagittarius serial killers are Ted Bundy, Harvey Glattman, a.k.a. The Lonely Hearts Killer, Edmund Kemper, a.k.a. The Coed Killer, and Rosemary West, a.k.a. The House of Horrors. Ted Bundy was born on November the 24th, 1946, in the USA. He kidnapped, assaulted, and murdered at least 20, but possibly more than 36 women. He was very charming and intelligent, and used it to approach his unsuspecting victims. He started as an organized killer, but as the killings progressed and he started killing more frequently, he he couldn't control the situation anymore and descended into disorganization. His typical modus operandi was feigning a physical injury, such as broken arm, and asking for assistance with something or pretend he was an authority figure. Actually, we can see this as very common in serial killers. Remember Richard Choque Flores and Miacislav Zub? Well, most women fell for this ruse, as there was nothing in Bundy's persona that would indicate he was a vicious predator. He engaged in necrophilia and would frequently revisit the bodies of his abducted victims. Because he was studying law, he thought that it would be a great idea to show his prowess by defending himself. It didn't go well, obviously. He denied killing his victims for more than a decade and finally confessed to 30 murders committed in seven states. He was executed in 1989. 
Harvey Gladman, a.k.a. the Lonely Hearts Killer or the Glamour Girl Slayer, was born on December 10, 1927, in the USA. Gladman's ruse consisted of posing as a professional photographer promising his victims a successful modeling career. He started his criminal career early. As a teen, Gladman would break into women's apartments and steal random items. He escalated to stalking and assaulting women, for which he was sentenced to five to seven years in prison. Two years into his sentence, he was transferred to Sing Sing, to serve out the rest of his sentence. He was diagnosed with psychopathic personality, schizophrenic type having sexually perverted impulses as the basis of his criminality. He was paroled in 1984. In 1987, he moved to LA and started looking for potential victims. He would contact women with offers of work for pulp magazines. He would take women to his apartment, assault them, all the while taking pictures of them. He would then strangle them and dump their bodies in the desert. He was executed in the gas chamber in 19. 1959. He killed three to four women. Edmund Kemper, aka the co-ed killer, was born on December the 18th, 1948, in the USA. His first murder occurred when he was only 15 when he killed his parental grandparents. He said that the reason he killed was because he wanted to see what it was like to kill grandma and that he killed his grandfather because he would be angry if he knew what Kemper had done. His moniker, the co-ed killer, comes from him later killing college students. His murders included necrophilia, decapitation, and dismemberment. He killed five college students, his mother and his mother's best friend. It is suggested that he killed the girls because of his intense hatred towards his mother. He later confessed that his desire to kill was completely gone after the culmination in the killing of his own mother. He killed a total of 10 people. Finally, there is Rosemary West, who we mentioned earlier in the video about Libra serial killers. Rosemary West and Fred West were a British couple who killed 10 people, including Fred's adopted daughter, Charmaine, and Fred's and Rosemary's biological daughter, Heather Ann. Rosemary West was born on November 29, 1953, in the UK. Rose's mother suffered from depression and was given electroconvulsive therapy both during and immediately after her pregnancy, which some argue may have caused prenatal developmental injuries to her daughter. Her father suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and, on top of that, was violent and sexually abused both Rose and her older sister. As a teen, Rose was moody and performed poorly in school. She deliberately paraded naked or semi-naked in front of her younger brother. Even at the age of 13, Rose would creep into his bed and molest him, which clearly shows that Rose displayed signs of deviant behavior as a child. This means that she definitely wasn't an unwilling partner of Fred West, who was scared of him and did the unspeakable things out of fear for her own life. Many female killers who kill alongside their boyfriends or husbands claim that. Rose was 15 when she first met 27-year-old Fred. Even though Rose's parents forbade the relationship, she left her parents and moved in with Fred. Before they got married and while Fred was in prison, Rose tortured and killed his adopted daughter, Charmaine. Jointly, they killed at least 10 people. The victims' dismembered bodies were typically buried in the cellar or garden of the West residence in Gloucester, which became known as the House of Horrors. Rose was sentenced to life imprisonment. It seems that Rose West and another infamous serial killer Myra Hindley got acquainted in prison, though Myra denied the rumors that they were friends or that they were having an affair. Rose confirmed that they knew each other because both were in the same wing. Another female serial killer, Joanna Christine Dennehy, had threatened to kill Rose West. By the way, she isn't on our list because only the year of her birth is available, but not the whole date. Rose West remains incarcerated. You've already become acquainted with the phenomenon of serial killer astro twins. They're serial killers who share the same date of birth with another serial killer, but have nothing to do with one another, and they're often from different countries. Would you be surprised if I told you that Ted Bundy is not the only serial killer born on November 24, 1946? He shares birthday with another serial killer from USA, Charles T. Sinclair. However, Ted Bundy and Charles T. Sinclair are not the only astro twins. Twins set. The other one consists of Billy Shamirmir from Kenya and Dmitry Golube from Russia, who were born on December the 8th, 1972. Since I've already talked about Bundy, I won't be mentioning him in this part. 
Charles T. Sinclair, a.k.a. the coin shop killer, is a nomadic killer who killed across the western United States and Canada. He committed 11 homicides, two attempted murders, and two sexual assaults. He targeted coin shop owners in order to rob them of valuable coin collections. His victims were killed to eliminate witnesses. The interesting similarity with Ted Bundy is that, like Bundy, he made himself known to his victims. He would frequent coin shops, sometimes even several times a day, talk with the owners, and pretend to be interested in making a purchase. The constant interaction with the shop owners gave the illusion of a trustworthy customer, so that when he decided to make his move, his victims wouldn't suspect anything. He usually committed killings by shooting the victims in the head using a small caliber gun. His motives also fall into the criminal enterprise category. He died in prison in 1990 of heart failure. Let's move to the second set of Astro Twins, Billy Shermirmir from Kenya slash USA and Dmitry Goluba from Russia. Billy Shermirmir is a convicted murderer and suspected serial killer who was born in Kenya but who committed his crimes in the USA. He was indicted for 22 murders and convicted of two. He is suspected of killing up to 28 people. He would pretend that he was a medical professional or a maintenance person so that he could gain access to properties of elderly women. He would then smother them with a pillow. Shamir Mir was sentenced to life in prison for one murder while the charges for other murders were dropped. This made the family members of the victims upset and justifiably so. Shamir Mir was killed in prison by a fellow inmate on September the 19, 2023, that is, a month ago. Dmitry Golubev is Uzbekistani-born killer. In 1991, he was convicted of a robbery murder in Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan. After the release, in 2003, he moved to Russia. In 2008, Golubev and his friends went to drink vodka at a little pond near the village of Krutets. There was a small group of fishermen who were also drinking extensively. An argument ensued, and one of the fishermen swung a knife at Golubev, scaring him away. He went back to his car and drove it through the tent of one of the fishermen, landing his car into the water. This didn't stop him, though, as he took out the knife he had in his car and attacked the fisherman trio and stabbed them numerous times. One victim was stabbed 19, the other 15, and the third one was stabbed 23 times. After killing the man, he fled the scene with his friends. He confessed to killing the trio during questioning, but claimed that he wasn't able to remember the events. Psychological and psychiatric examination concluded that he was well aware of his actions and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. As you can see, evil is not restricted to only one culture, one country or one part of the world. There is evil in every country and every culture, and here we are trying to analyze it so that we can detect it and prevent it in the future. Now let's dive into astrological profiling. Out of the 82 Sagittarius series, killers will focus on the planetary positions of the ones mentioned today. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Sun, Moon and personal planets Mercury, Venus and Mars. The rest of the planetary positions, including asteroids like Chiron, will step into the spotlight when we explore major aspects later. Since ascended data is a rarity, it won't be included, which also means that we won't be looking at the houses. Let's start with the Moon, a planet that reigns over our emotions, intuition, instincts and emotional responses. Some astrologers even argued that it's more important than the Sun in influencing our daily lives. Quick note, Moon changes sign roughly every two and a half days. Since we lack precise birth times for most serial killers, there might be instances where their Moon sign falls in one of two neighboring signs. Further analysis in subsequent videos will give us a better understanding of which of the two Moon signs is more likely to be correct than the other based on the characteristics of the crimes committed. It may come as a surprise that most Sagittarius serial killers have Moon in Cancer, nine of them. Cancer Moon is considered a good lunar position, as Moon is the ruler of Cancer. Cancer Moon natives are emotional and emotionally vulnerable. They're overly sensitive and notoriously moody. Sagittarius Sun and Cancer Moon form an inconjunction or quinquix, which is a minor aspect that indicates that the two signs have nothing in common. Though this may be seen as better than having a square or opposition, in conjunction can be confusing for the native, as it's like holding two completely different truths as true at the same time. The best word to describe this aspect is total confusion. A Sagittarius Sun Cancer Moon native is someone who is open-minded and independent, but at the same time very emotionally dependent. They want and hate being dependent on other people at the same time. Out of the mentioned serial killers in this video, 
Harvey Glattman has his moon in Cancer. Next, there are seven Libra, seven Sagittarius, and seven Scorpio moon killers. Libra moon is preoccupied with appearances, they prefer things to look a certain way, but don't pay much attention to how things actually are. This makes them look superficial as they are concerned with what others will say. They have a strong need to be in a relationship. Because they focus too much on appearances, they will tolerate a bad and toxic relationship as long as it makes them look good. They will generally tend to avoid conflict, which may lead to unresolved issues. They're also prone to manipulation and passive-aggressive behavior to maintain the status quo. A Sagittarius Sun Libra Moon native is someone who is optimistic and mild-mannered and who has a strong affinity towards finer things in life. Ivan Kele has his moon in Libra. Sagittarius moon is charming and fun-loving. They're essentially adventurers, both physically and intellectually. They like intelligent debates that keep them mentally involved and active. Sagittarius moon amplifies the traits of a Sagittarius sun. This can be good or bad depending on the person. These natives are also impulsive because they don't have much patience and they also often don't consider the consequences of their actions despite their innate intellect. This stems from Sagittarius optimism and the tendency to see the glass half full. Essentially, they believe that everything will work out in their favor and the longer things go without major hiccups, the more confident they become believing that they have faith and luck on their side. This can make them reckless and sloppy. They're fiercely independent and usually have commitment issues. Ted Bundy and Charles T. Sinclair have moon in Sagittarius. Scorpio moon is one of the two difficult moon positions. The other one is Capricorn. On its own, Scorpio moon is brooding, paranoid, dark, and obsessive. You can imagine how that can change the traits of an optimistic Sagittarius sun. These natives may look easygoing on the surface, but beneath they are intense, living in constant survival mode. Scorpio moon will try its best to hide its powerful and destructive nature, but when it does come out, it's one of the most violent energies out there. No killers mentioned in this video have Moon in Scorpio. Next, there are five Gemini Moon serial killers. Moon in Gemini is intelligent, friendly, flirty, and above all, talkative. They don't feel the emotions as much as they talk about them. They're quite changeable too and can change their mind about the person or situation at the drop of the hat. They don't understand emotions very well and believe that because their emotions are not so deep, other people's emotions are not deep either. This makes them quite insensitive to suffering. They're also reckless and erratic, especially in combination with Sagittarius Sun, as those two are in opposition. Timofey Pochivalov has his moon in Gemini. Next, there are four Aries and four Capricorn moon killers. Aries moon is assertive and aggressive. They don't wait for things to happen to them. They go and happen to things. Aries moon and Sagittarius Sun are in trine, which means that the wants and the needs of the native, their character and personality are seamlessly integrated. This doesn't mean that a native will somehow be peaceful and inoffensive. Trine doesn't indicate the inability to be a monster. It's just that there won't be an inherent tension observed in oppositions and squares. These natives have a short fuse and are prone to anger. They're also selfish and too focused on their needs and desires. They're also not endowed with patience. No killers have this moon. Capricorn Moon is another of the difficult moon positions. It's in exile, which means that while it's on the same axis as Cancer Moon, it embodies the opposite traits of a Cancer, mainly lack of emotion, sternness, ruthlessness, control issues, and rigidness. They're practical and workaholic, and they're very ambitious. They struggle to express emotions and may appear cold and calculating. In fact, they see emotions as obstacles and would prefer if they didn't exist. Their decisions are rarely tainted by their emotional states. Billy Shamirmir, Dmitry Golubev, and Lita and Van have this moon. There are three Pisces, three Taurus, and three Virgo moon killers. Pisces moon is not known for pragmatism and rationality. They're dreamy, intuitive, overly sensitive, and pessimistic. They have a tendency to escape from reality, which leads to the avoidance of responsibility. They're in love with love and spend most of the time dreaming about the ideal future without doing anything to achieve it. Pisces moon forms a square with Sagittarius sun, which only adds to the problem. These natives can't reconcile the independence and optimism of Sagittarius with the dependability and pessimism of Pisces. No killer mentioned has this moon. Taurus moon forms another in conjunction with Sagittarius sun. These natives are stubborn and materialistic. They're drawn to the luxurious life, much like Libra moon, but they also possess high levels of self-centeredness and only care about their own feelings and well-being. They prefer the predictability and the routine, which can make them lazy. They're resistant to processing and adapting to emotional changes, and emotional changes are something that scares them a good deal. They can be whiny and attention-seeking. Unlike Sagittarius sun, Taurus moon is resistant to personal growth and self-improvement. No killers mentioned have this moon. 
Virgo Moon is the second of the two squares. These natives are perfectionists, seeking that everything and everyone be flawless. Though they're also critical of themselves, they're usually not aware that their actions may hurt other people, and when it happens, they may blame the others for reacting negatively to their provocations. With Sagittarius Sun Virgo Moon, there is a struggle between the desire for spontaneity and the need for stability. There is also a disconnect between the idealism of Sagittarius and the ability to put it in action. These people are restless but also crave routine in their lives. Rosemary West has her moon in Virgo. Finally, there is one Leo moon killer. These natives have a lot of confidence. They're naturally self-assured. They're expressive and outgoing and often find themselves a center of attention. They can also be arrogant and believe that they are the best and that they deserve the best. They don't tend to feel remorse unless when it comes to accidental wrongdoings, but even then they may rationalize it by saying that it simply wasn't their fault because they didn't want to do it. Ed Kemper has his moon in Leo. As you've noticed, I haven't listed all the moon signs because some killers were born on the days when moon changed from one sign to another and those will be listed separately. There are six Capricorn Aquarius, five Gemini Cancer, four Aries Taurus and four Libra Scorpio moon killers. Carl Grossman has his moon in either Capricorn or Aquarius. Also, there are three Scorpio Sagittarius, one Aquarius Pisces, one Cancer Leo, one Leo Virgo, one Pisces Aries, one Sagittarius Capricorn, one Taurus Gemini and one Virgo Leo. Libra. Linda Hazard has her moon in either Virgo or Libra. It's interesting that no killers on the list have moon in Aquarius. For analysis of the individual cases and the comparison to the known moon signs will tell us which of the two signs is more likely to be correct. This might, of course, alter the existing statistics of serial killer moon signs, but in subsequent videos we'll see how much and in what direction. The next planet we're going to analyze is Mercury. Mercury is important to understand as it governs how we think and how we communicate with others. Others. Mercury can only be in three signs, the sun sign of the native, one previous and one subsequent sign. In the case of Sagittarius natives, it can be in Scorpio, Sagittarius and Capricorn. There are 46 Sagittarius, 8 in Scorpio and 8 in Capricorn Mercuries. Sagittarius sun conjunct Sagittarius Mercury tells that the core aspects of natives' identity and the way they think and communicate are similar if not the same. While conjunction as an aspect is seen as either good or bad depending on the person, I see sun conjunct Mercury as always good, as it helps the native express themselves in accordance with their character. This particular combination suggests that the natives are direct, open and expressive in their communication and don't have much filter. They have a strong love for learning and have an enthusiastic nature which especially shows when they talk. On the negative side, they can be argumentative because they have strong opinions but also a desire for debate. Lee Tan Van, Timofey Pochivalo, Edmund Kemper, Linda Hazard, Ivan Keller, Carl Grossman and Harvey Glattman have Mercury in Sagittarius. Sagittarius natives who have Mercury in Scorpio have an investigative mind. They have a strong desire to uncover what is hidden. They like both uncovering the secrets and creating them. They are blunt and straightforward in their communication style. They don't shy away from taboo or sensitive topics. These natives are intense and deep. They have strong belief in their intellectual capacities and know how to use words to manipulate others. They have penetrating insight which makes them attuned to the emotions and motivations of others, which can help them greatly in correctly assessing what their potential victims want and how to approach them. They're good at reading people, but because of the optimism of such areas, they may get cocky, thinking they will never get caught. Rosemary West, Ted Bundy, Charles T. Sinclair, Billy Shamirmir and Dmitry Golubev have Mercury in Scorpio. Natives with Capricorn Mercury have a pragmatic communication style. They're organized and practical. While Sagittarius Sun is energetic and enthusiastic, Capricorn Mercury may make these natives look far more serious when they communicate. They approach their love of exploration with a sense of responsibility and planning. They can also be very strategic and disciplined, which reduces Sagittarius's recklessness, at least when it comes to communication. When talking to them, one may not even realize that they are talking to a Sagittarius, as they will be hit with cold, hard facts, uncommon common for a typical Sagittarius. No killers mentioned in this video have Mercury in Capricorn. The next planet we're going to analyze is Venus. It is a very important planet, especially for our study. Venus is the planet of beauty, aesthetics, charm, and above all, relationships. In a male chart, it indicates what kind of person the native finds attractive, while in the female chart, it tells how the woman flirts. In both male and female charts, Venus shows what we want out of a relationship and how we behave in a relationship. Since majority of the cases we're investigating are of psychosexual nature, the position of Venus is very important. This is especially true 
true for male killers because their crimes are usually driven by sexual desires. Similar to Mercury, Venus can only be in five signs, the sun sign of the native, two previous and two subsequent signs. In the case of Sagittarius sun, Venus can be in Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn and Aquarius. There are 30 Scorpio, 24 Capricorn, 16 Sagittarius, 8 Aquarius and only 4 Libra Venus killers. Scorpio Venus natives are passionate and intense in love. They desire a profound emotional connection and are drawn to intense experiences in love. They are not afraid of taboo and usually like to explore the forbidden. Sagittarius Sun with Scorpio Venus native seek thrilling and adventurous experiences that will make them feel alive. They have a darkness around them that can be perceived in intimate relationships but doesn't have to be obvious to people who don't know them that well. They can sense what other people want and with whom they can totally open up. They love to explore the taboos with their partner. Majority of the serial killers mentioned have Venus in Scorpio. Rosemary West, Ted Bundy, Charles T. Sinclair, Billy Shamirmir, Dimitri Golube, Litan Van, Timofey Pochivalov, Adam Kemper, Carl Grossman and Harvey Glattman. Venus and Capricorn natives have traditional approach to love. They don't like the risks and are not very good at expressing emotions. However, when they fall in love, they fall hard. They will not be expressive though, as they show affection through practical actions and gestures, much like Venus in Virgo. When they do something for their partner, they expect them to recognize the effort and act accordingly. If they are not emotionally attached to someone, and it's rare occurrence when they are, they have a tendency to be cold-hearted. Linda Hazard has her Venus in Capricorn. Venus in Sagittarius values honesty and openness in a relationship. They prefer straightforward and direct approach. Essentially, they want to have fun in their relationships. They don't like the routine and predictability and may get bored with partners whom they know for too long. They're prone to cheating but expect their partners to be loyal to them. They want independence but want their partners to be there for them whenever they need them to for as long as they need them to and then to disappear when the native gets bored only to reappear again when the native needs them again. No killers mentioned have this Venus. Sagittarius Sun with Venus in Aquarius is someone who sees their ideal relationship as the sense of freedom and willingness to explore the new horizons together. They want to be in a relationship and thrive when they have someone by their side, but their approach to love is not romantic and emotional. They like everything that is new, exciting and unconventional. Unlike Capricorn Venus, this Venus is all about non-traditional love. They revel at the idea of being different and unique, being in such relationship or having a different and unique partner. Ivan Keller has his Venus in Aquarius. Finally, Libra Venus suggests someone who is social and charming. They find it easy to connect with others, mostly because they are agreeable, at least on the surface. This trait can put their victims at ease, which greatly facilitates predatory behavior. However, these killers may not see themselves as predatory at all, because this behavior comes to them naturally. They love luxury and may live beyond their means, always maintaining the appearance of having more than they actually have. No killers mentioned have this Venus. The last planet will be analyzed in this video is Mars. Mars is a very important planet, not just generally speaking, but for our astrological profiling. It deals with aggression, how we act and react to the world, the pain and how we go about doing stuff. In the male's chart, it shows how he flirts. In the female chart, it shows what kind of people she's attracted to. That isn't to say that when flirting, a man will not employ some of his Venus sign and a woman will not employ some of her Mars sign, as it happens often. And these two planets, Venus and Mars, are the ones most closely looked at when dealing with romantic relationships. In both charts it is also related to sexuality. Most Sagittarius Sun serial killers have Mars in Sagittarius, 20 of them. These people are assertive and action-oriented. They have high energy levels and love adventure and exploration. They are usually outdoorsy types who love challenges and will actively seek new experiences. They don't want to get bogged down by a routine of any kind. These natives are very self-confident and believe in their abilities. They are also competitive and ambitious, though they may hide it under the guise of having good old fun. They have restless energy, they are also impulsive and they are not known for their patience. Ted Bundy, Charles T. Sinclair, Timothy Pochivalov, Linda Hazard and Harvey Glattman have Mars in Sagittarius. 17 killers have Mars in Scorpio. These natives have intense drive and determination to achieve their goals. They are unyielding and pursue their goals with unwavering passion. A Sagittarius Sun, Mars in Scorpio native seeks intense experiences. They are not afraid to face challenges head on. However, they are also emotionally intense and have a tendency to be both destructive and self-destructive. When they fixate on something, they want to get it no matter what, not even if they perish in the process of achieving it. They are highly sensitive to betrayal, especially perceived betrayal towards them. Billy Shermirmir, Dmitry Golubev and Karl Grossman have Mars in Scorpio. 
Eleven killers have Mars in Capricorn. They have strong ambition that often borders on ruthlessness. They're willing to work diligently to reach their objectives without much concern to who they hurt along the way. They're persistent and they're not afraid of obstacles. They're very disciplined and patient. They will invest time and energy needed to achieve what they want. They usually have long-term goals. They're methodical and prefer to have planned for their actions than to act on a whim. No matter whether they're organized or disorganized killers, in their mind they will always make careful and cunning plans, regardless of how they end up appearing on the outside. Edmund Kemper has his Mars in Capricorn. Next, there are six Libra and six Leo Mars killers. Libra Mars killers are characterized by indecisiveness as they struggle to make decisions. They want everything balanced and harmonious according to their wishes. If it doesn't happen and people around them defy them, they may either fly into rage or go into nobody loves me mode. They can be passive aggressive because they don't know how to channel their emotions properly. They're also prone to manipulation to get what they want. They usually rely heavily on others and need other people's input and validation for any decision they make. If others approve of what they are doing, they get a boost of confidence which can easily swing into the direction of ruthlessness, the I'm protected, I can do whatever I like type of situation. Rosemary West has her Mars in Libra. Leo Mars is enthusiastic and energetic. They are bold and courageous, but also boastful and prideful. They take great pride in what they do, whatever that may be, and like to be praised for their actions. They have big egos and can get easily affected offended if they perceive that the other person is not appreciating them enough. They may act dramatically and in over-the-top manner. These natives can be very stubborn and may find it challenging to compromise or even admit fault. No killers mentioned have Mars in Leo. Next, there are five Pisces and five Virgo Mars killers. Pisces Mars natives have a tendency to be indecisive, like Libra Mars, though their indecisiveness is different, or better said, the motives are different. While well, Libra Mars can decide because they're weighing all the options and looking at the pros and cons of a situation, Pisces Mars prefers to go with the flow. They don't like the constraints that the decision-making implies. This is why they may be passive, as they usually avoid confrontation and responsibility. They have difficulty setting healthy emotional boundaries, but can also be very manipulative because of their oversensitivity. Litan Van has Mars in Pisces. Mars in Virgo is detail-oriented and meticulous. They also have an overcritical nature which makes them focus on flaws and shortcomings. They're prone to anxiety and worry as they are overthinkers and are constantly under stress. Like Mars in Capricorn, these natives are not very spontaneous. They prefer to plan and analyze than to act or instinct. No killers mentioned in this video have Mars in Virgo. Next, there are three Aquarius and three Cancer Mars killers. Aquarius Mars natives are stubbornly independent. They have a rebellious streak which goes hand in hand with a strong desire for individuality. One of the main characteristics is that they struggle to address emotional issues in a constructive manner and prefer to distance themselves from their feelings. They're very impersonal with their approach to things despite being very friendly and helpful. No killers mentioned have their Mars in Aquarius. Mars in Cancer is traditionally passive-aggressive. This stems from Mars being in fall when in Cancer. These two energies are basically incompatible. Mars is all about action and assertiveness and Cancer is anything but assertive. What happens is that Mars pushes Cancer to be what it is not, and Cancer will naturally resist it. Cancer Mars is also moody as they are sensitive to emotional fluctuations. They have a strong fear of rejection, especially when it comes to men, as Mars in Cancer strikes men harder than women. This is because society expects men to be assertive, and Cancer Mars male is incapable of doing so. On the other hand, it is socially acceptable for women to be passive. This doesn't mean that women will not feel the negative impact of Cancer Mars, though. Ivan Keller has his Mars in Cancer. Finally, there are two Gemini, two Aries, and two Taurus Mars killers. Mars in Gemini is restless and in constant need of stimulation, which makes it difficult to stay focused on long-term goals. They're erratic and have inconsistent energy, as their energy levels may fluctuate. They're multitaskers who prefer to do several things at once. This also makes them start various projects, but struggle to follow through to completion. Because they're so adaptable and intelligent, they can use it to manipulate others. No killers mentioned have Mars in Gemini. Mars in Aries is active and aggressive. They have short temper and are prone to anger and frustration when things don't go as they wish. They can easily fly into rage. The good thing is that they don't hold grudges. They're impatient and impulsive as they tend to react quickly to their emotions. They're very competitive and have a tendency to take risks without taking consequences into consideration. No killers mentioned have this Mars.
Taurus Mars is notoriously stubborn. This stems from their laziness and resistance to change. They lack the motivation to take action, especially if they don't see the immediate benefits for themselves. They're also possessive and jealous, much like their opposite Scorpio Mars. These natives usually stick to their habits and routines and have no intention to change them even if it's good for them. While their motto is slow and steady wins the race, they may get impatient if the things don't progress as they want, which often leads to frustration. No killers mentioned have Mars in Taurus. What have we learned so far? Sagittarius killers are smooth and charming. They are intelligent but can be reckless. A lot of these killers pretend to be someone whom they are not to get to their victims, either by pretending that they are injured, like Ted Bundy, or that they have a degree that they don't have, or pretty much anything else. This suggests that there is a greater possibility that a Sagittarius killer will make themselves known to the victim prior to abducting and or killing them. They don't have a problem striking a conversation with their potential victims and even pretend to be their friend. Stay tuned for more astrological profiling videos.